unit for education of children with communication disorder and learning difficulties in inclusive classrooms. Introduction Dear students, this unit gives attention to the causal factors of communication disorders, its classifications and types, educational needs and preferences of children with communication disorders, and barriers to education of these children. It also deals with educational modifications to be pursued by teachers of these children. Learning difficulty slash disorder as one area of children with special needs also will be treated under this unit. Developmental deviations children with learning disorders face due to personal, social and environmental factors get attention in addition to investigating the causes, types and educational program relevant to these children. Exercising to prepare individualized educational program also gets great attention under this unit. Unit Learning Outcomes Upon successful completion of this unit, teacher candidates are able to define terms related to communication disorders and learning difficulties. Modify classroom to meaningfully accommodate students with communication and learning difficulties. Value individual learning differences in inclusive classroom. Recognize personal, social and environmental barriers that interfere with education of children with communication disorders and learning disabilities. 4.1 the developmental characteristics of children with communication and learning difficulties. This section deals with developmental characteristics of children with communication disorders and the learning difficulties consecutively. Types and causes for the disorders also get emphasis for proper intervention and educational modification aspired in the inclusive classroom situation. Activity Define the meaning of communication disorder. Do you believe that sound, symbols, signs and voice have any connection with communication disorders? How does communication disorder interfering with human relationship slash interaction how do you distinguish between categories of communication disorders and its implication in the development of a child? What is learning difficulty? How could you understand it? Communication disorder. Some causes of communication disorders include hearing loss, neurological disorders, brain injury, mental retardation, drug abuse, physical impairments such as cleft lip or palate, emotional or psychiatric disorders, and developmental disorders. Frequently, however, the cause is unknown. It is, however, that communication disorders include problems related to speech, language and auditory processing. Communication disorders may range from simple sound repetitions such as stuttering to occasional misarticulation of words, to complete inability to use speech and language for communications aphasia. Communication disorders fundamentally include disorders of speech and language. Too many people, the terms communication, speech, and language mean essentially the same thing, but to special educators and speech-language therapists these are significantly different concepts that require different approaches to instruction. Communication is the broadest of the three terms, includes both speech and language. Communication also includes cues such as intonation, pace of speech, and stress emphasis, as well as nonverbal information such as gestures, 
facial expressions, and eye contact. Language can be defined as a socially shared code or system of conventions that represents and expresses ideas through symbols and rules. All language is communication, but not all communication involves language. Speech is a particular type of language. Speech refers to language that involves the coordination of oral neuromuscular movement to produce sounds. Language can be spoken, written, or signed. An interesting illustration of the differences among language, speech, and communication can be seen in children with normal hearing who are born to deaf parents. A child born to parents with hearing impairments may have difficulty with speech, but not with language, if she starts using sign language at a younger age. Infants who learn sign language can begin to communicate their needs as early as six months. Speech, however, may be delayed or different because the child has little experience with the spoken word. Although some students have difficulty with both speech and language, the majority of identified students have either speech or language disorders. According to the U.S. Department of Education 2000, 10% of school students have some sort of communication disorder. The majority of these students are not in special education. 87% study in the regular classroom and work with a speech-language therapist. Many children with other exceptionalities also have communication disorders. For example, children with autism or pervasive developmental disorder are likely to have language delays. The special education teacher, regular education teacher, and language therapist must work together to design teaching and learning techniques for these children. Speech Disorders Disordered speech is significantly different from the usual speech of others, and it detracts from the communicative abilities of the speaker. It is important to point out that difference in speech such as dialects or accents are not disorders. Only when a child's speech is significantly different from normal speech in his or her developmental context should the child be sent for a speech and language evaluation. There are three types of speech disorders. 1. Articulation Disorders account for the majority of speech disorders. The child is unable to produce sounds appropriate for his or her age. Articulation disorders also include substitution or omission of sounds for instance, saying th for s, or leaving out the l sound in words like klusenk instead. Articulation difficulties constitute the most numerous of all speech disorders. The term refers to difficulties with the way sounds are formed and strung together wabit for abit, omitting a sound han for hand, or distorting a sound sip for ship too. Fluency disorders are interruptions in the flow of speech. These can include difficulties with the rate, rhythm, or repetition of sounds, syllables, words, or phrases. Examples of fluency disorders include stuttering and cluttering, in which the forward base of speech is confused or full of extra sounds. Stuttering is, perhaps, the most serious disfluency fluency disorder. Stuttering is characterized by a disruption in the flow of speech. It includes repetitions of speech sounds, hesitations before and during speaking, and or prolongations of speech sounds. 
There are over 15 million individuals who stutter in the world. Most stutterers first exhibit disfluency at an early age, and stuttering occurs most frequently in children between the ages of 2 and 6, during language development. One child in 30 goes through a period of stuttering that can last 6 months or longer. 3. Voice disorders are impairment of the voice itself, and they affect the quality, pitch, or intensity of the person's speech. For example, students with voice disorders may sound hoarse all the time, or speak too loudly. Voice is generated by airflow from the lungs as the vocal folds are brought close together. The vocal folds vibrate when air is pushed past them with sufficient pressure. Without normal vibration of the vocal folds in the larynx voice box, the sound of speech is absent. To produce a whisper, the vocal folds need to be partially separated. Many people who have acquired normal speaking skills become communicatively impaired when their vocal apparatus fails. This can occur if the nerves controlling the functions of the larynx are impaired as a result of an accident, a surgical procedure or a viral infection. Activity What language areas do you assume will be affected when we consider language disorders? What is auditory processing disorder and its relation to communication disorder? What is the difference between language delay and language disorder? Language disorders. Language is the expression of human communication through which knowledge, beliefs and behavior can be experienced, explained and shared. A language disorder is the impairment or deviant development of expression and or comprehension of words in context. The disorder may involve the form of language, the content of language, and or the function of language as a communication tool. Disorders of language affect children and adults differently. For children who do not use language normally from birth, or who acquire the impairment in childhood, the disorder occurs in the context of a language system that is not fully developed or acquired. Many adults acquire disorders of language because of stroke, head injury, dementia or brain tumors. Language disorders are also found in adults who fail to develop normal language because of childhood autism, hearing impairment or other congenital or acquired disorders of brain development. The term language disorder indicates a difficulty in understanding and using speech, the written word, or another symbol system. According to the American Speech Language Hearing Association ASHAR, a language disorder is the impairment or deviant development of comprehension and or use of a spoken, written, and or other symbol system Bernthal and Banks and 1993 as cited in US Department of Education, 2000. The disorder may involve any of the following elements of language 1. Language form includes phonology, morphology and syntax application. Phonology, the sound system of a language and the rules that cover sound combinations in English, for instance, a shorter sounds like R, an X usually sounds like KS, a PH sounds like F. Morphology, the structural system for words and word construction in language. For example, the verb run can become the participle running. One way to remember the meaning of morphology is to think about how words morph used into other words when the meaning changes. 
syntax. The system in a given language for combining words to form sentences. English sentences typically put the subject first, then the verb, then the direct object, and so on. 2. Language content focuses on the meaning. Semantics. The meaning of words and sentences in language. Skill in semantics includes the ability to visualize, or interpret what someone has said, or what you have read, and to understand it. 3. Language function. Pragmatics. The ability to combine form and content to communicate functionally, and in socially acceptable ways for example, knowing when to say what to whom. A student with a language disorder may be unable to understand spoken language, or to produce sentences and share ideas in an age-appropriate way. The roots of these comprehension and production difficulties may reside in any of the areas of language just named. Some communication problems cannot be categorized strictly as speech or language disorders. Rather, they are broadly classified as auditory processing disorders. This term describes a general deficit in processing sensory information from the ears. A child with a learning disability who has such a disorder may take longer to process a question or direction, and can appear to be ignoring you, not attending to the class activity, or acting disobedient. Because auditory information processing takes longer for such a child, the information may never reach short or long-term memory. A child with an auditory processing disorder needs specific techniques to attend to the important parts of language and speech. 4.2. Identification and assessment of learners with communication disorder. Under this subsection, students are acquainted with the causal factors identification techniques and assessment strategies to be employed in the school systems. We perceive that the mostly mindful agents are the teachers who get in contact with the students in the classroom in the identification and assessments to be made. Activity How can you identify communication disorder? whose slash are primarily responsible body slash bodies identifying learners with communication disorders. What are the key components used in the assessments of children with communication difficulties? Who is responsible in the assessment of these children? Why? As indicated earlier, most children with communication disorders work in the regular classroom and receive special instruction in speech and language, usually with a speech-language therapist. As the classroom teacher, you can help identify the child with a communication disorder by listening to how the child speaks and what he or she says. The keys to look for consistent differences in language use, articulation, and comprehension. When a child consistently misspeaks saying th for s, for example, you should recommend to the parents that the child be evaluated for speech-language therapy. You must have parental permission before you have a student tested or evaluated in any way. When you invite a speech-language therapist, or any other specialist into your classroom, it is important to prepare your students for the visit. Letting the students know that a visitor will be observing the class can reduce their fears and curiosity. Talk with the student you're concerned about, and let him or her know that you've asked someone to come to help you understand what is going on in the classroom. Try to make the student comfortable. Avoid giving a special lesson on that day, 
or treating the student differently than you normally would. Allowing the specialist to observe the normal classroom routine will ensure that both you and your students receive the help you've asked for. Prior to the classroom observation the specialist may ask you to fill out a checklist like the one shown in figure 3. This checklist can help you organize your concerns and focus your own observation of the child. Again, it is absolutely necessary that you obtain parental permission before you have a student tested or observed. 4.2.1 education of children with speech disorder in inclusive classroom this subsection gives attention to the basic speech areas that were affected in the developmental period from the early conception areas of speech that may interfere with education of these children get specific consideration activity is it possible to give speech language therapy in the regular classroom? What is the reason behind? It seems better to inform students with communication disorder have speech therapy before the therapist arrives. Why do is it? Parents should collaboratively work with speech therapist and the teacher in assisting the child can you suggest the reason? Once a child has been identified as having a communication disorder, he or she will receive special instruction, most likely outside the regular classroom. This instruction will include techniques to help the child with specific needs for instance, practice in understanding language rules or exercises to teach the child how to position his tongue while he says a sound. The child will spend only a small portion of total school time in speech language therapy, so it is important to ask the specialist for techniques you can use in the classroom to reinforce what the child is learning. Be sure to share with the parents what the speech therapist is doing so they can complement this work at home. A child must learn how to effectively communicate with a variety of conversational partners on the playground, in the classroom, and at home. Therefore, speech language pathologists SLP should use techniques which provide the child the opportunity to learn appropriate forms of behavior and communication as well as how to use them in various social situations. SLPs often observe children in multiple settings throughout the day to determine in which settings the child needs more practice generalizing what he or she learned in therapy. It can also be helpful for the SLP to occasionally work with the child in the classroom or at home so that the child learns to use new information in those venues. 4.2.2 Education of children with language disorder in the inclusive schooling. This subsection reviews on the educational support and helping strategies on both speech language problems. Hence, Teacher candidates are advised to see parts of speech at the beginning and language following it. Activity There are best approaches professionals employ in speech and language therapy. Assume at least three tips for each. In the treatment of speech and language disorder, there has to be possibility of understanding one another between both communicators. Can you imagine the tolerance gap that may facilitate for the education of these children? Treatment of communication disorder will vary depending on the nature and severity of the problem, the age of the individual, and the individual's awareness of the problem. 
speech language pathologists select intervention approaches based on the highest quality of scientific evidence available in order to help individuals with articulation disorders to learn how to say speech sounds correctly assist individuals with voice disorders to develop proper control of the vocal and respiratory systems for correct voice production assist individuals who stutter to increase their fluency help children with language disorders to improve language comprehension and production e.g grammar, vocabulary, and conversation, and storytelling skills, assist individuals with aphasia, to improve comprehension of speech and reading and production of spoken and written language, assist individuals with severe communication disorders with the use of augmentative and alternative communication arc systems including speech generating devices SGDs, help individuals with speech and language disorders and their communication partners understand the disorders to achieve more effective communication in educational, social, and vocational settings, advise individuals and the community on how to prevent speech and language disorders, 4.3. Identification and assessment of students with learning difficulties A section treats the definition, types, identification and assessment techniques employed by professionals in dealing with children having learning difficulties. Activity how can classroom teachers and family identify a child with learning disorder? Do you believe that there are contributing factors to learning disabilities? If yes, what are they? If no, what is your reason? What are the basic concerns scholars forward in identification and assessment of children with learning disabilities? The definition of learning disabilities encompasses the following concern. Oh, it has been found out that individuals with learning disabilities show significant variation between their actual performance and the level at which professionals and parents think they should achieve. Oh, there are areas tasks that learning disabled individuals cannot do unlike their normal peers. They do not learn in the same way or as efficiently as their non-disabled peers. Oh, individuals' problem may focus on one or more of the basic psychological processes involved in using or understanding language. Oh, learning disabilities are not the direct results of poor vision or hearing disadvantages or cognitive disabilities, but these students are not learning. The major contributing factors for learning difficulties are 1. Brain dysfunction Mind controls every process in an individual and any kind of problem in this area will undoubtedly disturb the whole system thereby causing a problem in mental and other learning processes. 2. Genetics Research revealed that identical twins showed highest frequency of dyslexia than fraternal twins. 3. Environmental deprivation and malnutrition Severe malnutrition at an early age can affect the central nervous system and hence the learning and development of the child. What a child experienced in the home, community, school, etc. can affect attention and other psychological processes related to learning. 4. Motivational and Effective Factors A child who has failed to learn for one reason or another tends to have low expectation of success, does not persist on tasks and develops low self-esteem. These attitudes reduce motivation and create negative feelings about schoolwork. 5. 
physical conditions, visual and hearing defects, confused laterality and spatial orientation, poor body image, etc. can inhibit individual's ability to learn. 6. Psychological conditions, attention disorders, auditory and visual memory disorders, perception disorders, cognitive disabilities and language delay, etc. can be contributing factors to academic disabilities. Scholars in the area classify learning disability slash difficulty into two. The first category is developmental learning disabilities in which individuals manifest problems in attention, memory, perceptual motor, thinking, language, etc. The second group is academic learning disabilities that include problems in reading, spelling, and writing, arithmetic, etc. Learning disabled children have very poor task approach. They get easily overwhelmed which puts them in a difficult situation to solve certain problems. Therefore, teachers should serve as models for students as to how they can do certain problem. Children with learning disabilities have a problem in attention. So we have to try to focus their attention on relevant materials. Individual children, specifically the learning disabled, require different amounts of drill, practice, etc. Those who don't receive enough repetition to master the skills being taught will be left behind. Therefore, Giving materials which facilitate rehearsal maintenance and elaborative is advisable. 4.4. Assessment and elimination of social and environmental barriers in the inclusive schooling to facilitate learning. Under this section learners get acquaintance with major environmental and social barriers that that interfere with the child's education with communication disorders. It also focuses on the minimization strategies of the socio-cultural barriers to make school and family environment more facilitative in the child's education. Activity What are the major socio-cultural factors that affect education of a child with communication disorder? Do you believe that the clinician's knowledge of client's culture is important? Why? How does communication disorder contribute to failure and drop out of the child from school? What are the unhealthy school environment that may play significant roles in mounting communication disorder and related behavior problems? Biological and sociocultural factors combine to influence a child's language socialization. Language socialization is how children acquire communicative competency to be successful social members of their cultures. The biological factors are the individual's inherited capacities and interests. The sociocultural aspects Aspects include influence from parents, siblings, peers, and society on a child's language socialization and experiences with social interactions Greenwood et al. 2002 Language socialization occurs through social interactions in which a child learns appropriate behaviors, thought processes, and norms that fit a specific culture case. 1995. A child's language socialization and acquisition are greatly influenced by what the relevant culture defines as appropriate communicative partners, body language, and times to communicate. Children learn these differences in a variety of social interactions beginning early in life. Early parent-child interactions teach a child cultural norms, 
and can influence how a child interacts with other members of society. The wide variation of cultural communication styles and lack of recognition of and understanding of the varying styles makes it difficult to rate the appropriateness of social communication styles or skills of different behaviors. Kaxmarek, 2002. Therefore, it is important that during clinician child interactions, a clinician acknowledges the cultural influences on the child's communicative style. Kaser. 1995. An incorrect understanding of cultural differences in communicative style and content can lead a clinician to false conclusions about the child's competency, potential, and intervention progress. The varying cultural meanings of body language, eye graze, gestures, and posture often can lead a person who is unfamiliar with a culture to make incorrect conclusions about a child's communication ability or intents. Clinicians must also be sensitive to bilingual children who are attempting to learn a perfect or second language. When providing therapy for bilingual children with a communication, disorder it is extremely important to be culturally sensitive to child rearing practices, beliefs, and communication styles thought a daughter. 2010. The general goal for treating communication disorders is to achieve normal life participation in multiple social realms. The goal of therapy for bilingual children is for them to participate normally in the socio-cultural contexts of both their first and their second languages. Communication is not only important for making friends, but also for academic achievement Windsor, 1995. A child's social communicative skills and academic development are influenced by experiences at home as well as at school. A supportive home environment with frequent verbal interaction with parents, parental participation at school, and encouragement from parents in social and intellectual skills contributes to your child's ability to develop appropriate skills Greenwood et al. 2002. The school environment, characterized by the frequency of positive and negative interactions with peers and teachers, and by the child's academic performance, has a strong influence on social communicative development and academic achievement. An unhealthy school environment or inadequate support from parents will likely constrain a child's social communicative and cognitive competency by not providing optimal opportunities for success. Not only are group situations difficult, but children with disorders face difficulties with academic success due to their interpretations of their own abilities. Students with social communication impairments are likely to have low self-concepts and less motivation to achieve because of past failure Winsor, 1995. They demonstrate poor self-concepts by attributing success to the ease of a task, help from others, or luck, and by attributing failure to their own inabilities. These issues combine to produce slow academic achievement, which can often be a precursor of problems in other areas, such as dropping out of school and failure in career pursuits Windsor. 1995. The resulting failure can also be an indicator of future delinquency. It is important to master social communication skills early in life, and to use them to gain communicative, emotional, cognitive, and social competence, 
In order to feel successful and increase the likelihood of becoming capable and responsible adults. 4.5. Identification, Assessment, and Planning of Appropriate Learning Styles and Strategies to Support Children with Communication Disorders. This unit focuses on the recommended models to be used by instructors that are so helpful in the educational strategies for children with communication disorders. The section also deals with developmental orientations prominent in the education of children with language and speech disorders. Activity How do family and or school identify and assess a child's communication ability in planning for appropriate strategies in the preformed groups? Suggest on the recommended ways of communication development of children with communication disorders. Identify the benefits of your responses in the speech and language development of these children. Here are some recommendations to keep in mind with regard to language and speech development for any child with or without an identified communication disorder. Modeling when a child mispronounces a word, or is not clear, restate what the child has said. That is, instead of saying what, or I don't understand you, say, did you just ask me to? Think of a one-year-old child you know. When he or she says, bah, you might say ball or bottle, but you would never say what. To a child so young, help the child by modeling what you think she is trying to say. It is frustrating for her to repeat herself with no feedback about what you did or did not understand. Making speech clear and easy to understand. Organize your classroom and student seating, so that all students can easily see and hear you. Reduce background noises as much as possible, and eliminate distractions like an open door into a noisy hallway. Make sure a student knows that you are addressing him or her before you start speaking. Be sure to speak loudly enough for your students to hear, and if you know you tend to be a fast talker, slow down. Promoting language exchange show students you are interested in them by listening. This may sound simple, but in a typical classroom of 25 students we'll ignore what someone is saying from time to time. Let your students know you are interested, by making time every day, to talk to each of them, when they arrive at school in the morning, at lunch, recess, or during a small group activity. Be sure to encourage students to talk to you and each other and elaborate on their comments and responses. By creating an environment where all students regularly talk, you will encourage language development in all children. Read to your students at every level. Students can increase their language skills by hearing text read aloud. Read a news story to your high school students. Make time after lunch to read to your first graders or read a student's paper to the class. Although some students will be reluctant to read aloud during a lesson, all students appreciate a good story and reading to them is a great way to model interacting with text. It also helps by differentiating between conversational speech and reading, increasing vocabulary, and providing a quiet break for everyone in the classroom. 4.6 Individualized Educational Plan IP and Curriculum Modification to accommodate learning preference of children with learning difficulties in inclusive classroom. This section deals with certain categories of learning disabilities, 
and what educational modifications needed to assist these children. Since the difficulties are specific to the individual learner, it seems better to treat each separately as following. Activity, what is a specific learning disorder? How can a teacher support a child with dyscalculia? What is dyslexia and curriculum modifications a teacher should employ to assist a child with this disorder? What is dysgraphia and a coding problem? How do you assist these children as a classroom teacher and facilitator in inclusive setting? Children who have another first language than the language of instruction, who are homeless, who have to work in the afternoons and evening, who do not get enough to eat, or who suffer from abuse will experience barriers to learning, development, and participation. Here are the specific learning difficulties we have addressed in this subsection. Dyscalculia Children with dyscalculia have difficulties learning the most basic aspect of arithmetic skills. The difficulty lies in the reception, comprehension, or production of quantitative and spatial information the physical location of objects, and the metric relationships between objects. Children with dyscalculia may therefore have difficulty in understanding simple number concepts, lack an intuitive grasp of numbers, and have problems learning number facts and procedures. Dyscalculia is in some ways like dyslexia for numbers. Very little is known about the prevalence of dyscalculia, causes or treatment. Most children with dyscalculia have cognitive and language abilities that are well within what is considered the normal range. They may excel in non-mathematical subjects. Dysgraphia is a learning disability resulting from the difficulty in expressing thoughts in writing and graphing. It generally refers to extremely poor handwriting. Dysgraphia is a neurological disorder characterized by writing disabilities. Specifically, the disorder causes a person's writing to be distorted or incorrect. In children, the disorder generally emerges when they are first introduced to writing. They make inappropriately sized and spaced letters or write wrong or misspelled words, despite thorough instruction. Children with the disorder may have other learning disabilities. However, they usually have no social or other academic problems. Cases of dysgraphia in adults generally occur after some trauma. In addition to poor handwriting, dysgraphia is characterized by wrong or odd spelling and production of words that are not correct i.e., using boy for child. The cause of the disorder is unknown. Treatment for dysgraphia varies and may include treatment for motor disorders to help control writing movements. Other treatments may address impaired memory or other neurological problems. Some physicians recommend that individuals with dysgraphia use computers to avoid the problems of handwriting. Some individuals with dysgraphia improve their writing ability, but for others, the disorder persists. Dyslexia. Children with dyslexia experience difficulties affecting the learning process in aspects of literacy and, sometimes, numeracy. A persistent weakness may also be identified in short-term and working memory, speed of processing, sequencing skills, auditory and or visual perception spoken language and motor skills. Many children with dyslexia do not only experience barriers, 
but they will also have special abilities, which include good visual spatial skills, creative thinking and intuitive understanding. These abilities help to reduce some of the barriers to learning that they face. Decoding activity, represented by letters of the alphabet, they are the component sounds of spoken words. Most people automatically hear, for example, that the word goat is made up of three sounds ca, o, and ha. Reading requires the ability to map the phonemes small sounds that form words we hear to letters on a page, and vice versa. But what happens when this basic skill, called decoding, does not come automatically? Imagine struggling to sound out every word, because you cannot distinguish among phonemes. Hence, the teacher should make sure that all the children in the class feel valued and important including those children who experience barriers to learning, development, and participation encourage and motivate all the children in the class to do the best they can. Have high expectations for intellectual stimulation do not underestimate the children concerned, but reasonable expectations for written responses and reading skills. Explain things many times, and in many different ways sometimes to the whole class, to a smaller group of children as many will benefit from this as well as individually to the child with dyslexia. When you give instructions, be deliberate and use few and accurate words, and make simple sentences. Allow time for the meaning of the words to sink in. Make sure that all the children have understood, by asking them to explain it back to you, or to another child. Guide the children about how to tackle tasks systematically. Children with dyslexia will often need to be taught things that other children learn automatically without your help. This will benefit many other children experiencing barriers to learning as well. This might include how to clean up their desk, put away their books after they have finished with them, get dressed properly, remind them to look for something they have misplaced, pack their school bag, and tie their shoelaces. It is important that you as a teacher and their parents recognize the importance of taking time to teach these skills in calm, systematic and repeated regular routine. Try to evaluate written assignments together with the child. If possible, focus on what the child has done right content, spelling, grammar, sentence structure. Select some of the main errors and concentrate on those, instead of overwhelming the child with corrections. The movements of these children often appear clumsy. Gross and fine motor skills related to balance and coordination and fine motor skills relating to manipulation of objects are hard to learn and difficult to retain and generalize. Writing is therefore particularly difficult and time-consuming. Computer keyboard skills are also difficult to acquire, as well as playing the flute and many other musical instruments. The following techniques emphasize on each of the problems with which learning disabled students have difficulty with. 1. Language areas. It includes the following skills listening, speaking, reading, writing. Learning disabled students may have a problem in one, two or more of these skills. A. Listening. Dash this skill involves attending, processing information and having enough knowledge of vocabulary and content to put a speaker's speech into a meaningful form. The following techniques help to improve problems in attention, 
making tasks interesting, decreasing the length of the task, using varied instructional materials, reducing verbal distractions, helping learners to maintain an eye contact with either the teacher or peer or both to facilitate nonverbal communication. Scheduling difficult tasks when the student is most alert, giving shorter assignments, tests and providing immediate feedback. Techniques to improve processing of information, facing the learning disabled student, by saving the words distinctly and slowly. This can solve the problem of auditory discrimination. Repeating words, listening words on a tape. Presenting a pair of words to the learning disabled student can help in alleviating transposing problem. Techniques to improve vocabulary and content problem. Teaching by materials in which children are quite familiar with experiential approaches. In other words, the context should be natural. Be speaking. In improving problems in the area of speaking, we use the following strategies. Modeling saving the correct one and reinforcing the correct way or repeating by the student, giving different contexts, so that students with learning disability can practice language. Allowing students to assume a rise orient slash passages, etc. read by the teacher. See reading. The problem in this area revolves around the following basic elements. 1. Decoding. Dash individuals with learning difficulty have a problem in matching sounds with their respective letters in order to read. To minimize the difficulty, teaching sounds by combining consonants with vowels till they become automatic can be taken as a solution. 2. Comprehension. Dash to improve students with learning difficulty problems in comprehension, a number of specific arrangements can be made. To mention a few, presenting familiar materials slash giving daily experience materials, making them responsible for their own learning, by requiring them to assume a rise, use self-questioning, clarity, etc. what they are reading. 3. Speed. Dash students with learning difficulty are slow readers. To solve this problem, allowing them to read aloud for some amounts of time per day can be taken as a remedy. D writing. It consists two aspects, technical and narrative aspects. The technical aspect focuses on punctuation, handwriting, grammar, style of writing, spelling, etc. and the narrative aspect refers to writing, to describe something by using technical aspects. Learning disabled individuals have problems in both dimensions, and the difficulty can be overcome by allowing students to practice on the two aspects. E-mathematics Problems in this area include knowledge of basic skills, conceptual understanding and speed. Students may have problems in one or more of these. To help them learn we can use a rehearsal, repetition, overlearning, etc. O games, concrete and abstract materials and multisensory material. O flashcards with symbols plus dash comma x prominently drawn and requiring students to identify. O simple and less complicated language grammar, sentence, unit summary. Many children have speech or language disorders, including stuttering, inability to articulate certain words, and auditory processing problems. When these children face challenges in educational settings, they develop negative attitude 
and misbehave to react to the existing situation that may create adverse effect on their future life. Because of this, early intervention is deemed to be the key to successful treatment. Speech is produced by precise, coordinated muscle actions in the head, neck, chest, and abdomen. Speech development is a gradual process that requires years of practice. During speech development, one learns how to regulate these muscles to produce intelligible speech. It is estimated that by the first grade, 5% of children have noticeable speech disorders, the majority of which have no known cause. There is no universally agreed upon definition of learning disabilities. Learning disabilities refer to a heterogeneous bunch of academic and non-academic learning problems which may hinder learning that occurs in certain children, adolescents and adults. Though learning disabilities is identified recently, it is the rapidly growing area in special education. Learning disabled individuals do manifest a number of psychological and behavioral characteristics. Most importantly, they are characterized by low academic performance in one or more of the academic areas. The low academic performance is a benchmark of learning disabled individuals. In order to improve their academic performance professionals suggest different intervention measures to be taken. Such psychoeducational considerations to be made should depend on the types of problems an individual is experiencing, specialists underlined. General assessment strategies and techniques the following activity helps identifying the learner's competence, whether they show the desired outcomes, after completing this unit. You can add additional activities as indicated in the following, to assess the learner's possess necessary results. Activity, who is slash are most significant in assisting children with communication disorder. Reason out your response with evidence. To what extent do you think that modeling helps learning disabled individuals learn better and indicate required behaviors form potential models? If any, what activities in the pre, during and post instructional periods should teachers use to remediate listening, reading, speaking, writing, arithmetic problems. Briefly summarize specific intervention strategies and give your reasons showing the relevance of designing them.